How are you guys doing? Today is Thursday, August 5th, 2021. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review the Elite matchups and performances from yesterday, Wednesday, August 4th, and I'm going to preview everything that's going on today as we navigate through the world of sports one day at a time. Starting in Cincinnati in Great American Ballpark, the Reds hosted the Minnesota Twins, and the Reds were able to beat the Twins 6-5 to five as the Twins scored four of their five runs in the eighth inning, but it just wouldn't be enough. For the Twins in this matchup, the start and the loss would be given to Charlie Barnes. Barnes allowed five earned runs and four innings pitched as he struck out two. With this loss, Barnes is 0-2 on the year. In the Twins batting lineup, their shortstop Jorge Polanco will go two for four with an RBI and two runs as he had his 18th home run of the season. Their third baseman, Luis Arise, would end up going three for three with a run. And then the only other player with more than one hit was their catcher, Ryan Jeffers. Ryan Jeffers would go two for three with an RBI for the Twins. And for the Reds in this matchup, the start and the win was given to Luis Castillo. Castillo allowed one earned run off six hits and six innings pitched as he, as he struck out seven. With this win, Luis Castillo is 6-10 and ten on the year. The save for Cincinnati would go to Michael Lorenzen. Lorenzen would allow no earned runs and 1.2 innings pitched as he struck out three. He would pick up his first save of the year. In the Reds batting lineup, their rookie second baseman, Jonathan India, would go three for five with an RBI. The only other player in their lineup with more than one hit was their catcher, Tyler Stevenson. He went two for four with two RBIs and a run. With this win, the Cincinnati Reds are now 57 and 51. That is the second best record in the National League Central. They've won six of their last 10 games. They now trail the Milwaukee Brewers by seven and a half games in the division. And they currently trail the San Diego Padres by four games for the second National League wildcard spot, as the Reds are currently the first team on the outside looking in behind the Padres. With this loss, the Minnesota Twins are now 45 and 63. That is the worst record in the American League Central and the third worst record in the American League. They have lost seven of their last 10 games as they now trail the Chicago White Sox by 18 games in the division. Jumping out to Tampa Bay, the reigning American League champs hosted the Seattle Mariners and were able to pull off a 4-3 win at home, scoring three of their runs in the third inning off of a two-run triple from Randy Orozarena and a sacrifice fly from Joey Wendell to bring Orozarena home. For the Seattle Mariners in this matchup, the start and the loss would go to Logan Gilbert. Gilbert allowed three earned runs and in five innings pitch as he struck out six. Uh, with this loss, he's now five and three on the year. In the Mariners batting lineup, their shortstop J.P. Crawford would end up going two for four with an RBI and a run. Their right fielder Mitch Hanniger would end up going three for four with a run as well. For the Tampa Bay Rays, the start in the win would go to Josh Fleming. Fleming allowed two earned runs and five innings pitched as he struck out six. With this win, he's nine and five on the year. The save would end up going to the Rays' closer, Ryan Sheriff. Sheriff allowed no earned runs and one inning pitch as he struck out a batter. That'd be his first save of the year. In the Rays' batting lineup, their elite left fielder, Randy Arosarena, would end up going two for four with two RBIs and a run. He was the only player on the team with more than one hit. But with this win, the Tampa Bay Rays are now 65-44. and 44. That is the best record in the American League East, and that's the second best record in the American League at the moment. They have now won five of their last 10 games as they now sit one game ahead of the second place Boston Red Sox in their division. And right now they are holding the two seed in the American League as they sit behind the Astros out west and the Chicago White Sox of the Central. With this loss, the Seattle Mariners are now 58-51. and 51. That is the third best record in the American League West. They've lost five of their last 10 games as they trail the Houston Astros by seven and a half games in the division. And at the moment, alongside the Toronto Blue Jays, they trail the Oakland Athletics for the second American League wildcard spot by three games in that race. Jumping out to Milwaukee, the National League Central leading Milwaukee Brewers hosted the Pirates, who were sitting at the bottom of the division. The Brewers were able to beat the Pirates 4-2 after scoring three runs in the seventh. It was a three-run home run from Rowdy Telez that would give the Brewers win number 65 of the year. For the Pittsburgh Pirates, the start was given to their starting pitcher for the day, of course, Stephen Brault. Brault allowed one earned run in four innings pitch as he struck out two. The loss was given to their second relief pitcher, Kyle Keller. Keller allowed two earned runs and .2 innings pitch as he struck out a batter. With this loss, he's 0-1 on the year. In the Pirates batting lineup, their right fielder, Hoy Park, would end up going 
two for five on the day. Their center fielder, Brian Reynolds, will go two for two with two runs on the day. Those are the only two players with more than one hit. For the Milwaukee Brewers, the start was given to Freddie Peralta. He allowed two earned runs and six innings pitched as he struck out nine. The win was given to the Brewers' first relief pitcher, Brent Suter. Suter allowed no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck out a batter. With this win, he's 10-5 and five on the year. And the save was given to their elite closer for the day, Devin Williams, the reigning National League Rookie of the Year. Devin Williams would allow no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck out two. This would be his first save of the year. In the Brewers' batting lineup, their second baseman, Colton Wong, will go two for four with a run. Their first baseman, Eduardo Escobar, will go three for four with an RBI as well. And with this win, the Milwaukee Brewers are now 65-44. and 44. That is the best record in the National League Central as they've won seven of their last ten games. They currently sit seven and a half games ahead of the second place Cincinnati Reds. And they're holding the second seed in the National League playoff picture right now, sitting behind the Giants out west and sitting ahead of the New York Mets out east. With this loss, the Pittsburgh Pirates are now 41 and 67. That is the worst record in the National League Central as they've lost seven of their last 10 games. They now trail the Milwaukee Brewers by 23 and a half games in the division. Jumping out to Oakland, the second seed in the American League wild card, the Oakland A's hosted the second seed in the National League wild card playoff picture, the San Diego Padres. And the A's would win this one at home in extra innings. They would go into the bottom of the ninth, actually trailing three to one. Uh, and then two RBI singles from Matt Chapman and Jan Gomes would keep the game alive in the bottom of the ninth and send it into the extra innings. In the top of the 10th, Tommy Pham reaching on a fielder's choice would bring Hassan Kim home and give the re- the Padres their their only run of the of extra innings. And then for the A's, it would be a walk-off two-run double from Matt Olson that would secure their 61st win of the year. For the San Diego Padres, the start was given to Joe Musgrove. Musgrove allowed one earned run in six innings pitched as he struck out five. He only allowed two hits in those six innings that he pitched. The loss would go to the Padres' closer for the day, Tim Hill. Tim Hill would allow two runs without allowing a single out. This would be his fourth save of the year, and with his loss, he's five and six on the season. In the Padres' batting lineup, their first baseman, Jurix and Profar, would go two for four. Their center fielder, Trent Grisham, would go two for four with an RBI and a run. And their catcher, Victor Caratini, would end up going two for four with an RBI and a run for himself. For the Oakland Athletics, the start was given to Frankie Montaz. Montaz allowed three earned runs and six innings pitched as he struck out eight. The win was given to the Oakland A's closer for the day, Lou Trevino. Trevino would allow one run and one inning pitched, and with this win, he's four and four on the year. In the A's batting lineup, their first baseman, Matt Olson would be the only player on the team with more than one hit as he went two for five with two RBIs. With this win, the Oakland Athletics are now 61-48. and 48. That is the second best record in the American League West. They've won five of their last 10 games as they now trail the Houston Astros by four and a half games in the division. And they're holding on to the second spot in the American League wild card. Like I mentioned earlier, they are trailing the Boston Red Sox, the first team in the wild card, by three games. And they currently sit two games ahead of the New York Yankees, who are the first team on the outside looking in the American League wildcard picture. With this loss, the San Diego Padres are now 62-48. and 48. That is the third best record in the National League West. They've lost six of their last 10 games as they now trail the San Francisco Giants by seven games in the division. And in the wild card picture, they sit three and a half games behind the first place Los Angeles Dodgers. And they also sit four games ahead of the Cincinnati Reds, who are the first team on the outside of the National League wild card picture looking in. Jumping out to Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, the Nationals hosted the Philadelphia Phillies and the Phillies were able to pick up a 9-5 to five home, or road win. For the Nationals in this matchup, the, loss went, the start in the loss went to Paolo Espino. Espino would allow six earned runs and five innings pitched as he struck out three. With his loss, Paolo Espino is 3-3 three and three on the year. In the Nationals lineup, their second baseman for the day, Luis Garcia, would end up going two for four with two RBIs and two runs. Garcia would hit his second and third home runs of the season, and then the Nationals' third baseman, Carter Keyboom, would end up going two for four with two RBIs and a run, as Carter Keyboom would end up hitting his second home run of the season. For the Philadelphia Phillies, the start was given to Chase Anderson. Chase Anderson allowed three earned runs and four innings pitch as he struck out one. The win would go to the Phillies' second relief pitcher, Matt Moore. Matt Moore allowed two earned runs and four innings pitched as he struck out three. With his win, he's one and three on the season. In the Phillies' batting lineup, their second baseman, Gene Segura, will go two for four with an RBI and a run. 
their elite right fielder Bryce Harper would end up going three for five with two RBIs and two runs for himself as he had his 26th double of the year. Their first baseman Reese Hoskins would go two for four with three RBIs and two runs as he had his 24th home run of the year. And then the Phillies catcher Ian Knapp would end up, or Andrew Knapp would end up going two for five with a run. With this win, the Philadelphia Phillies are now 55 and 53. That is the second best record in the National League East. They've won their last four games and they've won six of their last 10. At the moment, they currently trailed the New York Mets by a game and a half in the division. With this loss, the Washington Nationals are now 49 and 59. That is the fourth best record in the National League East as they've lost their last three games and they've lost six of their last 10. They currently trailed the New York Mets by seven and a half games in the division. Jumping out to New York in the Bronx, the New York Yankees would host the Baltimore Orioles, their in-division rival. And after the Orioles scored all three of their runs by the top of the, by the middle of the fourth inning, the Yankees would end up scoring all 10 of their runs starting from the fourth inning to the end, picking up their 58th win of the year. For the Baltimore Orioles, the start was given to Matt Harvey. Harvey allowed two earned runs in four innings pitched as he struck out a batter. The loss would go to the Orioles' second relief pitcher on the day, Cole Solcer. Cole Solcer allowed one earned run in one inning pitch as he struck out a batter. With this loss, Solcer is 3-2 and two on the year. In the Orioles' batting lineup, the center fielder Cedric Mullins was the only player with more than one hit as he went 2-4 for four with a run. For the New York Yankees, on the other hand, the star went to Jamison Tyon. He allowed three runs in 6.1 innings pitch as he struck out 10. The win would go to the Yankees' first relief pitcher, Jonathan Loisaga. Loisaga would allow no earned runs and only one hit in .2 innings pitch as he finished the seventh. With this win, he's 8-4 and four on the season. And in the Yankees batting lineup, their elite second baseman, DJ LeMay, he would go 3-5 for five with four RBIs and a run. Their elite designated hitter, Giancarlo Stanton, would go 2-3 for three with three RBIs and a run. And their elite shortstop, Glaber Torres, would go 2-4 for four with two RBIs. With this win, the New York Yankees are now 58-49. and 49. That is the third best record in the American League East. They've won their last two games, and they've won seven of their last ten. They currently trail the Tampa Bay Rays by six games in the division, as they are currently trailing the Oakland Athletics for the second American League wildcard spot by two games. The Yankees are the first team in the American League outside of the wild outside of the set wild card um, seeds. With this loss, the Baltimore Orioles are now thirty eight and sixty nine. That is the worst record in the American League East, and that is the worst record in the American League. They've lost their last two games, and they've lost five of their last ten. At the moment, they trail the Tampa Bay Rays by twenty six whole games in the division. Jumping out to Toronto, the Toronto Blue Jays hosted the Cleveland Indians. The Blue Jays were able to pull up an 8-6 to six win at home, scoring all eight of their runs in the first three innings, as the Indians scored all six of their runs in the last two. For the Indians in this matchup, the start and the loss ended up going to J.C. Mejia. Mejia allowed eight earned runs, all eight of the runs that the team would allow, and 2.1 innings pitched as he was unable to strike out a batter. With this loss, Mejia is 1-7 on the year. In the Indians' batting lineup, their designated hitter, Framil Reyes, would go 2-for-5, or they're 2-for-4 on the day with a run. Their left fielder in this matchup, Oscar Mercado, would end up going 4-for-5 with an RBI and two runs. Their second baseman, Owen Miller, would end up going two for five with three RBIs and a run. Now, as I mentioned, Mercado will hit his second home run of the season, going back to him. And then the Indians catchers, Austin Henges, would end up going two for five. Additionally, their elite third baseman, Jose Ramirez, would go one for five with an RBI and a run as Ramirez hit his 24th home run of the season. For the Toronto Blue Jays, the start and the win went to Steven Matz. He allowed no earned runs and only six hits in six innings pitched as he struck out eight. With this win, Steven Matz is 9-6 and six on the year. Their designated hitter, George Springer, would go 4-5 for five with three RBIs and two runs as he had his 13th home run of the year. And with this win, the Toronto Blue Jays are now 56-49. and 49. That is the fourth best record in the American League East. They've won their last two games and they've won seven of their last ten. They currently trail the Tampa Bay Rays by seven games in the division as they trail the Oakland Athletics by three games in the American League wildcard race alongside the Seattle Mariners. With this loss, the Cleveland Indians are now 52-53. and 53. That is the second best record in the American League Central. They've lost their last two games as they've lost six of their last 10. They currently trail the Chicago White Sox by nine and a half games in the division. Jumping out to Detroit, the Detroit Tigers hosted the Boston Red Sox. 
The Red Sox were able to beat the Tigers 4-1 as they scored three of their four runs in the fifth inning, courtesy of a two-run home run from Enrique Hernandez or Kike Hernandez and a solo home run from Jaron Duran as all of the Reds as all of the runs scored in the game yesterday in this particular game were off of home runs for the Detroit Tigers in this matchup the start in the loss went to their farm product Casey Mize he allowed four earned runs and five innings pitched as he struck out three with his loss Mize is six and six on the season in the Tigers batting lineup their second baseman Jonathan Scope would go two for three with an RBI and a run as he had his 18th home run of the year for the Boston Red Sox the start in the win went to Eduardo Rodriguez He would end up allowing no earned runs and only two hits in five innings pitch as he struck out 10. With this win, Rodriguez is 8-6 on the year, and the save would end up going to the Red Sox closer, Matt Barnes. Barnes allowed no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck out two. This would be his 24th save of the season. In the Red Sox batting lineup, their second baseman, Kike Hernandez, would go two for four with two RBIs and a run. Kike Hernandez would hit his 15th home run of the season yesterday. Their all-star shortstop, Xander Bogarts, would go two for three. Their elite designated hitter, J.D. Martinez, would go one for four with an RBI and a run as Martinez hit his 21st home run of the season. And then their left fielder, Alex Verdugo, would go two for four. With this win, the Boston Red Sox are now 64-45. and 45. That is the second best record in the American League East as they've only won four of their last 10 games. They trailed the Tampa Bay Rays by a game in the division and they are holding on to the top American League wildcard slot, sitting three games ahead of the second place Oakland Athletics. With this loss, the Detroit Tigers are now 52-58. and 58. That is the third best record in the American League Central. They've lost five of their last 10 games as they now trail the Chicago White Sox by 12 games in the division. And jumping out to Miami, the Miami Marlins hosted the National League East leading New York Mets, and the Mets were able to pull off a 5-3 win on the road after breaking their 3-3 tie in the eighth inning thanks to a solo home run from their elite new infielder Javier Baez and also a walk drawn by Brandon Nimmo. For the Miami Marlins in this matchup, the start was given to Ross Thompson or Zach Thompson. Zach Thompson would allow three runs in four innings pitch as he struck out two. The loss was given to their third-to-last relief pitcher, Anthony Bass. Bass would allow two earned runs and .2 innings pitched as he struck out two. With this loss, he's 1-7 in seven on the season. In the Miami Marlins batting lineup, their first baseman, Jesus Aguilar, was the only player on the team with more than one hit. He would go 2-4 for four with an RBI and a run as he had his 19th home run of the season yesterday. For the New York Mets, the start was given to Carlos Carrasco. Carrasco would allow two earned runs and 4.1 innings pitch as he struck out five. The win was given to the Mets' third relief pitcher on the day, Miguel Castro. Castro would allow no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck out a batter with his win. He's 3-3 and on the season. And the save for the Mets would end up going to Trevor May. Trevor May allowed no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck out a batter. Or he struck out two batters. This is his fourth save of the year. In the Mets batting lineup, their second baseman, Jeff McNeil, will go two for five. Their left fielder, Dominic Smith, will go two for five with a run. Their elite shortstop, Javier Baez, would end up going would, hit, would end up going two for five with an RBI and two runs as he had his 24th home run of the season. And their right fielder, Michael Conforto, will go two for four with two runs. With this win, the New York Mets are now 56 and 51. That is the best record in the National League East as they've won four of their last 10 games. They currently sit a game and a half ahead of the second place Philadelphia Phillies in the division, and they're holding on to the third seed in the National League playoff picture as they trail the San Francisco Giants out west and the Milwaukee Brewers of the Central. With this loss, the Miami Marlins are now 46 and 62. That is the worst record in the National League East, and that is the third worst record in the National League. They've lost five of their last 10 games as they now trail the New York Mets by 10 and a half games in the division at the moment. Jumping out to Dallas, the Texas Rangers hosted the Los Angeles Angels, and the Angels were able to pull off a 2-1 to one win on the road uh, for the Rangers. The start and the loss went to Colby Allard. Allard allowed two earned runs and six innings pitched as he struck out three on the day. With this loss, Colby Allard is 2-10 on the season. In the Rangers batting lineup, their shortstop Isaiah Kiner-Falefa was the only player with more than one hit as he went 3-4 for four with a run. For the Los Angeles Angels, the start and the win went to their all-star starting pitcher Shohei Otani. Otani would allow one earned run in six innings pitched as he struck out six on the day. With this loss, Otani is 6-1 on the season. The save would end up going to the Angels' closer, Rizal Iglesias, as he allowed no earned runs in one inning pitched as he struck out a batter. 
with this save, he's now he now is 23 on the year in the Angels batting lineup. The only or they had two players with more than one hit. Their left fielder Justin Upton will go two for four, and then their third baseman captain Jack Mayfield would end up going three for three with an RBI and a run as Mayfield hit his sixth home run of the season yesterday for Anaheim. With this win, the Los Angeles Angels are now 54 and 54. That is the fourth best record in the American League West. They have now won their last two games and they've won five of their last 10. They now trail the Houston Astros by 11 games in the division. With this loss, the Texas Rangers are now 39 and 69. That is the worst record in the American League West and the second worst record in the American League. They've lost their last two games and they've lost six of their last 10. The Rangers now trail the Astros by 26 games in the division at the moment. Uh, Jumping out to the south side of Chicago, the Chicago White Sox hosted the Kansas City Royals within their division, and the Royals were able to pick up a 9-1 win after the Royals were able to score six of their nine runs in the first four innings before the White Sox scored their only run of the game. For the Chicago White Sox in this matchup, the start and the loss went to Lucas Giolito. He allowed six earned runs and four innings pitched as he struck out two. With this loss, Lucas Giolito is now 8-8 eight and eight on the year. In their batting lineup, their left fielder Andrew Vaughn would go two for two. He was the only player on the team with more than one hit. Also in the White Sox batting lineup, the only player to bring a run home was their elite first baseman, reigning American League MVP Jose Abreu. He would go one for four with an RBI and a run. He hit his 19th home run of the season. For the Kansas City Royals, the start and the win was given to Carlos Hernandez. Hernandez allowed one earned run off of only two hits in five innings pitched as he struck out six. With this win, Hernandez is 3-1 and on the year. And in the Royals batting lineup, their elite second baseman, Whit Merrifield, would end up going 3-5 for with an RBI and two runs on the season. Their elite catcher, Salvador Perez, would end up going 2-4 for with two RBIs and a run as Perez hit his 27th home run of the season. Their center fielder, Michael A. Taylor, would go two for four with an RBI and two runs as he had his 10th home run of the year. And their shortstop, Nicky Lopez, would go two for four with an RBI and a run. With this win, the Kansas City Royals are now 46 and 60. That is the fourth best record in the American League Central and the fourth worst record in the American League. They've won five of their last 10 games as they now trail the Chicago White Sox by 16 games in the division. With this loss, the Chicago White Sox are now 63-45. and 45. That is still the best record in the American League Central, even though they've lost five of their last 10 games. As a matter of fact, they sit nine and a half games ahead of the second place Cleveland Indians in their division, as they are currently holding on to the third seed in the American League, sitting behind the Astros out west and the Tampa Bay Rays out east. Jumping out to St. Louis, the St. Louis Cardinals hosted the Atlanta Braves, and the Braves were able to beat the Cardinals 7-4. The score was tied at 4 going into the 8th inning before Stephen Vaughn's sacrifice fly would bring run home. He would bring one home, I'm sorry, and then Jock Peterson's two-run double would increase the Braves' lead to three and give them their 54th win of the season. For the St. Louis Cardinals, the start was given to their newest starting pitcher, J.A. Happ. J.A. Happ would allow two earned runs and five innings pitch as he struck out four. The loss was given to the Cardinals' penultimate relief pitcher, Giovanni Gallegos. Gallegos would allow three earned runs and .2 innings pitched as he struck out one. With this loss, Gallegos is 5-4 and four on the year. In the Cardinals' batting lineup, their elite third baseman, Nolan Arenado, would go 2-4 for four with three RBIs and a run as Arenado hit his 21st home run of the season along with his 28th double. He was the only player in the Cardinals' lineup to finish with more than one hit. For the Atlanta Braves, the start was given to Drew Smiley. Smiley allowed three earned runs and four innings pitched as he struck out two. The win was given to their third relief pitcher on the day, Chris Martin. Martin allowed one earned run and one inning pitch. He would pick up his third blown save of the year, and with this win, he's one and three. The save was given to Will Smith, their closer. Uh, or Will Smith would allow no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck out two as he picked up save number 22 of the season. For in the Braves batting lineup, their shortstop Dansby Swanson would end up going four for four with three runs on the day as he was the only player on the Braves with more than one hit. And with this win, the Atlanta Braves are now 54 and 54. That is the third best record in the National League East as they've won their last two games and they've won six of their last 10. They currently trail the New York Mets by two and a half games in the division at the moment. And with this loss, the St. Louis Cardinals are now 53 and 54. That is the third best record in the National League Central. They've lost their last two games and they've lost six of their last 10. They now trail the Milwaukee Brewers by 11 games in the division. 
jumping out to Denver, the Colorado Rockies hosted the Chicago Cubs, and the Cubs were able to beat the Rockies 3-2 to two after scoring all three of their runs in the fifth inning off of a Patrick Wisdom double off of one play. For the Colorado Rockies, the start and the loss went to John Gray. He allowed, no, he allowed three earned runs in six innings pitched as he struck out six. With his loss, Gray is 7-7 seven and seven on the year. In the Rockies batting lineup, their left fielder, Ryan Mel Tapia, will go 2-for-4 with a run. Their second baseman, Brendan Rodgers, will go 3-for-4 with an RBI and a run. And then their third baseman, Ryan McMahon, will go 2-for-3. For the Chicago Cubs, the start and the win went to Alec Mills. He allowed two earned runs and six innings pitched as he struck out three. With this win, Alec Mills is 5-4 and four on the year. The save for the Cubs will go to their closer, Manuel Rodriguez. He allowed no earned runs in one inning pitch as he struck out a batter. That was, so I said that was his first save of the year. In the Cubs batting lineup, their third baseman, Patrick Wisdom, will go three for four with three RBIs on the day. The only other player on their team to finish with more than one hit was their left fielder, Jonas Fargas. Sorry if I butchered the name. He would go two for four on the day. And with this win, the Chicago Cubs are now 52 and 57. That is the fourth best record in the National League Central as they've won four of their last 10. They now trail the Milwaukee Brewers by 13 games in the division. And with this loss, the Colorado Rockies are now 47 and 61. That is the fourth best record in the National League West as they've lost six of their last 10. They now trail the San Francisco Giants by 21 games in the division. Jumping out to Los Angeles, the reigning World Series champs took on the Houston Astros, the current leaders of the American League West. The Dodgers were able to pick up a 7-5 win at home after scoring all seven of their runs in the first three innings. For the Houston Astros, the start and the loss went to Jake Odorizzi. Odorizzi allowed seven runs in three innings pitched as he struck out three. With this loss, Odorizzi is 4-6 and six on the season. In the Astros batting lineup, their right fielder Michael Brantley will go two for four with an RBI and a run as Brantley hit his seventh home run of the season. Their shortstop Carlos Correa will go two for four with an RBI and a run for himself as he hit his 17th home run of the season. Their center fielder Kyle Tucker will be the last player with more than one hit as he went two for three with three RBIs and a run on the day. Tucker hit his 21st home run of the season. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, the start and the win was given to their goaded starting pitcher in his Dodger debut, Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer would allow two earned runs and seven innings pitch as he struck out 10. With this win, Max Scherzer is 9-4 and four on the season. And in the Dodgers batting lineup, their elite second baseman, Mookie Betts, would go 2-5 for five with two RBIs and two runs. His two hits were his 16th and 17th home runs of the season. Their elite shortstop, Corey Seager, would go 2-4 for four with a run. And then their left fielder, A.J. Pollock, would go 2-4 for four with two RBIs and a run. Uh, Pollock would hit his 14th home run of the year. And with this win, the defending World Series champs, L.A. Dodgers, are now 65-44. and 44. That is the second best record in the National League West as they've won six of their last ten. They currently trail the San Francisco Giants by three and a half games in the division as they hold on to the top NL wildcard spot, sitting three and a half games ahead of the second place San Diego Padres. With this loss, the Houston Astros are now 65 and 43. That is the best record in the American League West. They've lost four of their last 10 games as they now sit 40, four and a half games ahead of the second place Oakland Athletics within their own division. And they are currently holding on to the top seed in the American League as they are, as they are the as they currently sit half a game ahead of the Tampa Bay Rays out east, and they are also sitting ahead of the Chicago White Sox in the central. Jumping out to Phoenix, last but not least, the Arizona Diamondbacks would host the San Francisco Giants as the holder of the worst of the MLB's worst record lost to the holder of the MLB's best record. The Giants will win this game 7-1, to one, scoring six of their seven runs between the sixth and seventh inning. For the Arizona Diamondbacks in this matchup, the start and the loss was given to their elite starting pitcher, Zach Gallen. Gallen allowed three earned runs in 5.2 innings pitched as he struck out six. With this loss, Zach Gallen is 1-6 on the season. In their batting lineup, nobody on the Diamondbacks would finish with more than one hit. And for the San Francisco Giants, the start in the win was given to Kevin Gosman. Gosman allowed one earned run in six innings pitch as he only allowed five hits. He struck out eight on the day. And with this win, Gosman is 10-5 and five on the season. In the Giants batting lineup, their third baseman, Tommy Lastello, would end up going two for two with a run. Their left fielder, Alex Dickerson, would go two for four with three RBIs and two runs as he had his 12th home run of the season. 
season. Their second baseman, Donovan Solano, would end up going two for four with three RBIs in a run. And with this win, the San Francisco Giants are now 68 and 40. That is currently the best record in the MLB with wins or in, in total wins and win percentage wise. The Giants have won seven of their last 10 games as they currently sit three and a half games ahead of the second place Los Angeles Dodgers in their division. And in the playoff picture, they currently sit ahead of the Milwaukee Brewers in the Central and the New York Mets out East. With this loss, the Arizona Diamondbacks are now 34 and 75. That is the worst record in the National League West, the worst record in the National League, and that is the worst record in all of baseball. They have now lost six of their last 10 games. And at the moment, they trailed the San Francisco Giants by 34 and a half games in the division to give you a sense of how big the difference is between the worst and best teams in baseball. Right now, it's 34 and a half games. Uh, and that's everything with the MLB as it pertain as it leads up to today. And of course, today is Thursday, less of a travel day, or it, or today is more of a travel day. So you're going to see more a lot of a lot of earlier games starting from the very top at twelve ten. Braxton Garrett and the Miami Marlins are going to host Rich Hill and the New York Mets at one ten. Tariq Skubal and the Detroit Tigers are going to host Martin Perez and the Boston Red Sox at two oh five. Spencer Howard and the Texas Rangers are going to host Dylan Bundy and the Los Angeles Angels at three ten on ESPN Plus. Antonio Senzatella and the Colorado Rockies are going to host Jake Arrieta and the Chicago Cubs. At 340, the, or, or Merrill Kelly and the Arizona Diamondbacks are going to host Alex Wood and the National League leading San Francisco Giants. Alex Wood enters this matchup with a 9-3 and record and a 3.83 ERA. At 405, George, Joe Ross and the Washington Nationals are going to host Aaron Nola and the Philadelphia Phillies. At 705, Nestor Cortez and the New York Yankees are going to host Tyler Anderson and the Seattle Mariners. At 707, Ross Stripling and the Toronto Blue Jays are going to host Tristan McKenzie and the Cleveland Indians. At 710, Sonny Gray and the Cincinnati Reds are going to host Will Crow and the Pittsburgh Pirates. At 810, uh, the, da the Dallas Keuchel and the Chicago White Sox, the elite Dallas Keuchel and the Chicago White Sox are going to host Daniel Lynch and the Kansas City Royals. Keuchel enters this matchup with a 7-4 and four record alongside a 4.51 ERA. Also at 8-10, Fromber Valdez and the Houston Astros are going to host Griffin Jackson, the Minnesota Twins. Fromber Valdez enters his matchup with a 7-2 record alongside a 3-0-1 ERA. And last but not least, at 8-15 on ESPN, Wade LeBlanc and the St. Louis Cardinals are going to host Tukey Toussaint and the Atlanta Braves. Right now, that is what the MLB schedule is looking like and looking really quickly into what's been going on with the medal count for, or the medal winners for day 12 of the Olympics. Just to remind you that because of the time difference, this is the way I really got it covered because they're still in day 13 of the events. But going to the day 12 medal winners, the, starting with boxing, the gold medal for the men's light heavyweight uh, event would go to Arlen Lopez of Cuba as he was able to be Benjamin Whitaker of Great Britain. In cycling, Italy was able to take the gold in the men's track pursuit. In equestrian, Ben Maher of Great Britain was able to take the gold medal for individual jumping. Uh, in sailing for men's two-person 470, the gold medal will go to Australia. In the women's two-person 470, the gold went to Great Britain. Uh, in the skateboarding events in Women's Park, the goal went to Sakura Yosozumi of Japan, uh, as Kokona Hiraki of Japan would end up taking the silver. In the swimming events in the Women's 10K Swim, the goal went to Ana Marcela Cunha of Brazil. In synchronized swimming, the Women's Duet goal went to the Russian Olympic Committee for their, uh, for their choreography. In the track and field events in Men's 200, the gold medal went to Andre de Grasse of Canada. In the Men's 800 meter, the gold medal went to Emmanuel Kipkuru keep Kuri Kawar career of Kenya. Sorry if I butchered the name. And the men's hammer throw, the goal went to Wojciech Nowicki of Poland. And like I said, I'm not going to be the best, but I'm going to try my hardest to get the name right. In the women's 3,000 meter steeplechase, the gold medal went to Peruth Chamutai of Uganda. In the women's 400 meter hurdles, the gold medal in the world record went to Sydney McLaughlin of the United States. Congrats to her. Uh, in weightlifting, the gold medal for men's 109 kilogram plus went to Lasha Talakadze of Georgia as he would end up breaking the world record in the clean and jerk. And why well, he, he broke the world record and actually in, in all three lifts or in all three sections of it uh, and wrestling for men's Greco uh, Roman wrestling for 67 kilograms. The gold medal went to Mohamed Drija 
Garei of Iran as he beat Parviz Nazibov from Ukraine in the gold medal match. And the men's Greco-Roman event for 87 kilograms, the gold medal went to Zan Belunuk of Ukraine as he was able to beat Viktor Lorinch of Hungary in the gold medal match. And then in women's freestyle, 62 kilogram wrestling, the gold medal went to Yukako Kawai of Japan as she was able to beat Aisalu Tsnakbakova of Zyrgyzstan. Sorry if I butchered the name. But that's everything that's going on with that. And in terms of soccer, soccer will not start back up, un- or at least pref- or at least like in the main leagues, until tomorrow as Ligue 1 soccer will pick up as AS Monaco takes on Nantes. But with that said, I, I, I want to thank everyone for taking this day by day with me. I want to thank the MLB, ESPN, Olympics, and FIFA websites for giving me the facts and figures that I need in order to, do, in order to complete this episode. I hope all is well. And once again, today is Thursday, August 5th, 2021. Once all of today's match, matchups and exhibitions are complete, I will come back tomorrow um, on Friday, August 6th for another episode of The Elite to cover everything that happened today. So until then, thanks for listening to my piece. I hope all is well, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace out.